You guys know how in Singapore, everything is so strict that we just automatically assume that all the food that we buy is safe to eat unless proven otherwise. So what actually happened? How did the food get recalled? Does the Singapore Food Agency really check every single piece of food that enters our mouth? The short answer is no, but before you guys panic and throw in the complaint letter, hear me out because today, we will be diving deep into how Singapore keeps its food safe for us. Checking every single piece of food sounds like the best way to keep everyone safe. But that is physically and logistically impossible to do so, not only in Singapore but anywhere else on Earth. So the next best thing that we could do is to set up a food safety regime that is based on risk which is why SFA has adopted a risk-based approach that is guided by a science-based risk assessment and management approach. High-risk food products such as meat and eggs imported into Singapore must be imported from sources that are accredited by SFA only. This is because meat and eggs can carry food safety risk and animal diseases of public health and trade importance. As part of the accreditation process, SFA conducts documentary evaluations and on-site inspections to ensure that overseas establishments and farms are able to meet Singapore's import requirements and food safety regulations before they can start exporting to Singapore. We're going to head into Kulina's warehouse facilities that houses both dry and refrigerated storage facilities for food processing, packaging and others. Hi, Kenneth! Hey, hi, MJ! This is Kenneth an inspector from SFA. So today we are going to inspect a uh, consignment that has just came to Singapore. Maybe it's a bit cold inside, do you want to wear okay. it? Okay! <laughs> oh, oh, we yeah. touch holding! Okay, okay! Yeah. I'll wear it now! Oh, 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 very cool, very cool. Okay, so today we will be taking uh, some of these samples to the lab for their test and assessment. So okay. first, uh, let us wear the glove. Oh, my hand! Oh, I feel like I'm Elsa already. Oh, you're so cold! So this document, we will use it to tell you that this is indeed a consignment that has entered Singapore. So maybe you can check at this number or study the numbers of the of the health certificate. Oh look at that. So meat. what we do is when we take this meat, okay. we take one look around, okay, to make sure there's no spoilage, no ah. discolorization. Okay, and after that, we will, we will bring this to the lab for the test. B and J can put this in the back for me. It's an easy job. Alright, thank you. Okay, then heat goes in. Yep, that's it. While Kenneth transports the collector samples back to the lab for testing, we're going to make a quick pit stop elsewhere. Bye, Kenneth! Thank you for today! Our next pit stop is at a supermarket, one of my favourite places in Singapore. And we'll be looking at how food products outside of the high-risk category are checked. Hello! This is Zhi Ning, a scientist from SFA's Monitoring and Evaluation Specialist Team. We check for food sold at the retail areas such as supermarkets, wet markets, coffee shops, hawker centres uh, to assess whether the food sold are safe for consumption through lab testing. We explains why we are here at the supermarket. SFA has developed a sampling plan that comprises a structured combination of various food categories and is guided by the import volume, past failure rates, as well as current scientific knowledge on food, hazards and exposure risk. The bad findings from our market monitoring will help us target such food imports for regulatory checks. Sampling premises are also selected through a randomization process. For today, we will be collecting samples of nuts and seeds for salmonella analysis. We also take out manufacturer's information, expiry date, production date and batch number for traceability and to aid further investigation process. We then store these samples um, properly depending on the condition of purchase, either Ziploc bag or the cooler bag. Okay, subsequently, this, they will be transported to a laboratory for acknowledgement and lab analysis. Alright, time to head to the labs! For our last stop, we are going to SFA's Food Microbiology Lab to test the samples that we have sent in earlier. Hello! Hey MJ, thanks for bringing the items over. This is Shu Yun, a scientist with the virology team. No problem, how can I help today? Okay, so we'll be testing for salmonella in the food products you have brought in. Consuming salmonella contaminated food can cause serious gastrointestinal illnesses in vulnerable populations such as the elderly, young children and those with weakened immune systems. These tests are thus oh. important to ensure that the food sold in Singapore meets our food safety standards and are safe for consumption. Oh. <gasps> okay. okay, so after incubation, we will actually transfer certain volume into a tube. Here. Okay. okay. Push it. Yes. 
All right. Okay. And we'll run the test. Yay! How long do we wait? Um, we need to wait for one hour. Okay, okay. Yeah. This bag should look safe. The results are all okay. Yay! Yeah. But um, if there's any salmonella genetic material okay. present, we actually move on to the next step. So let me show you how we do it. Okay, okay let's go. Does the testing for salmonella work the same way for like meat and nuts? Yeah, it's more or less similar to eggs, but we use a different set of procedures. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, so what happens if the product is deemed unsafe? Well, when a food product is scientifically proven to be unsafe for consumption, a few things can happen. If the food is tested to be unsafe, SFA will direct the importers to dispose of the food if the food is still in the warehouse. If the food is in the market, SFA will direct importers to recall the products and issue a consumer advisory to alert consumers who have purchased the implicated product not to consume it. Other follow-up actions will include subjecting the incoming imports of product to test before the product can be released for sale, reporting the findings to overseas competent authorities for follow-up, and for worst-case scenario, we may suspend the source of the product from exporting to Singapore. MJ, come over to this side and I'll show you how salmonella looks like. Ooh, yeah. quite pretty eh. Yeah. So you'll show different types of colonies on different egg gas. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, wow. MJ. Although SFA is doing a lot to ensure that our food is safe for consumption, food safety is really a joint responsibility between the government, the food industry and also us consumers. For food producers, manufacturers, importers and distributors in Singapore, they play a huge part in making sure that they maintain high food safety standards by complying with SFA's stringent requirements to ensure that their products are safe and wholesome. On the other hand, for us consumers, we need to be vigilant about certain food safety warnings. For example, by looking out for expiry dates or discolouring of food products when grocery shopping and also by making sure that we store our food properly, especially at the appropriate temperature. While preparing food at home, we should always remember not to mix raw food with cooked food to prevent cross-contamination. Now that we have followed SFA through the whole process of the entire food safety regime, I hope you guys feel a lot more confident in the safety of the food that we consume. That's all for today. Just keep thinking.